Not big enough to be a dragon, Tsunami whispered. I think. Now Clay could hear a huffing, panting sound and the cracking of branches. It sounded more prey than predator. He pried Tsunami's claws off his snout and whispered, Maybe we can eat it. They couldn't rescue the other dragonets until sunrise anyway, and he wanted to test his hunting skills outside the caves. A short, pale creature stumbled into the moonlit clearing in front of them. The top of its furry head was barely as high as Clay's shoulder. It had two long, thin legs and two dangling arms that ended in floppy, clawless talons. One arm held something pointy, like a giant dragon's claw, and the other was wrapped around a bulky sack. It spotted Tsunami and Clay, dropped everything it was holding, and shrieked a long, high-pitched note, like the birds Clay had sometimes heard through the sk sky hole. It's a scavenger! Tsunami cried with delight. Look, Clay, our first time outside, we've already seen a real live scavenger. Oh, it's so little, Clay said. And look, it's scavenging something right now. He reached out to poke the bulky sack. The creature screamed again, backing away and covering its head with its arms. I thought they'd be scarier, Tsunami said, disappointed. She lowered her snout to peer at it. One of these killed Queen Oasis? Really? She picked up the metal claw it had been carrying, which was about four times as long as a regular dragon claw. I guess these are pretty sharp, but still, it must have been some kind of unlucky accident. Can we eat it? Clay asked, his tongue flicked in and out. Starlight says that they're endangered, Tsunami said. But I say it's their fault we're all in this war, so eat as many as you like. She swung the claw in a circle and glared down at the scavenger. The scavenger was gibbering strange noises at them, waving its arms at the sack and the claw. Some of its movements was almost dragon-like, as if it was trying to communicate with them. Maybe whatever it wants us to have what's ever in here, Clay said, lifting the sack. He upended it, and a pile of jewels and trinkets tumbled out, bouncing and sparkling across the grass. Clay saw three large rubies and a scattering of white diamonds among the gold shapes. Treasure! Tsunami cried. She picked up a silver medallion with a spiral curl carved into it, studded with tiny sapphires. Glory would love that, Clay said. So would I, Tsunami said. I know you like bringing her pretty things to cheer her up, but I saw this first. All right, Clay said diplomatically. Maybe something else then. Can we keep all this treasure? Certainly not, said a new voice. Not unless you want to fight me for it, which I don't advise. An orange skywing dragon, slightly bigger than clay, landed soundlessly in the clearing behind the scavenger. Wreaths of smoke coiled around her horns. As the scavenger shrieked again, she bent down and bit off its head. Blech, she said, spitting it out again immediately. The head bounced across the grass as the body slowly toppled over, blood pouring out of its neck. Now that's just not fair, said the orange dragon. First of all, thieves are always trying to steal my beautiful treasure, and then they aren't even delicious when I catch them. She poked the body. How stringy and tasting like fish. Ugh. Clay took a step back from the spreading pool of blood. He didn't feel hungry anymore. Who are you? Tsunami asked. She was turning the medallion over between her claws, as if she wondered whether it might be worth fighting for. The orange dragon stared at her, her yellow eyes narrowing to slits. Clay noticed that a fine coat of golden chainmail hung with rubies and amber drops was fitted around the dragon's torso. A row of tiny rubies was embedded between the scales over each of her eyes, and more rubies edged the top of her wings. Whoever she was, she had a lot of treasure, which meant she must be important. You don't know who I am, the strange dragon asked. How upsetting, I'm really hurt. Either I need to get out more, or you're not a very good spy, are you, Sea Wing? I'm not a spy, Tsunami said. We don't even know where we are. We've been held prisoner, kind of, and we just escaped. The orange dragon tilted her head at Clay. A Sea Wing and a Mud Wing together, she said. Let's see. I know you're not from my dungeons, unless I'm getting horribly forgetful. So who was holding you? Blaze, I don't think she has prison camps. Wouldn't fit with her everybody loves me act. Clay took another step back. He didn't like the sound of a dragon who had her own dungeons. Tsunami, 
he said quietly. Just give her back her treasure and let's go. A mudwing using his head, said the orange dragon. You don't see that very often. She slid menacingly towards Tsunami, stepping right through the scavenger's blood and leaving red claw prints on the grass. Small flames flickered in her nostrils, and a steady stream of white smoke poured out and gathered more thickly around her horns. All right, we don't want any trouble, Tsunami said, holding out the medallion. Oh, neither do I, said the orange dragon. That's why it makes me so sad when trouble keeps coming to me. She reached out and grabbed Tsunami's talon with the medallion still in it, squeezing hard. Clay started forward, but the strange dragon shot a bolt of flame at him, so he had to duck back. She glared at Tsunami. Nobody touches my treasure. We didn't know, Tsunami protested. We don't even know who you are. Oh, didn't I say, the dragon hissed. My name is Scarlet. But I highly recommend you call me Your Majesty if you want to live. Clay inhaled sharply. Even he recognized that name. They were standing face to face with the Queen of the Skywings.